Hey guys, it's Trice here, and this is a Volkswagen Beetle body. As you may have seen the thumbnail, instead of making a front-engine car, I'm going to make it rear-engine, just like the original Beetle made from 1938 to 2003. Also, it'll be front-wheel drive to make this build even more bizarre. So anyways, we'll start off with our build. So first things first, to pretty much go along with some 2003 cars or similar and all that good stuff. So for the panel material, we'll be choosing partial aluminum with a monocoque chassis made out of corrosion-resistant steel. And like I said, the engine placement, rear longitudinal with the front suspension type set to a McPherson strut. And the rear, we're going to be using a double wishbone suspension setup. And for naming the engine, I know Volkswagen does this for real life for the inline 3 engines we're going to make. So we're going to be calling this the 1.3 R3. And a variant name since the EA-111 and 211 exists, so... EA-100, I guess? The predecessor of those two engines? So yeah, I might as well go from there. So for the, uh, right-click button, so for the engine, inline 3, made out of aluminum with the bore set to an 84.4 millimeters and the stroke, if I get this right here, go. And you stroke at 81.7 millimeters to get the engine size set to 1370 cubic centimeters, around 1.4 liters. And this is just heavy, since this is a 1.4 liter engine, we'll change this there. Now the engine family name is final. And we're we'll using some dual cam 4 valves made out of aluminum also. So for the crank comrades and pistons, well pretty much this engine in general, I done this all off camera to make it realistic as possible in terms of fuel efficiency and performance and all good stuff including cost too. Crankshaft forged steel with the comrade set to just regular old cast, the piston set to a hyper utetic cast, and for the balancing shaft, must have a balance shaft because well, it's an inline 3. For the compression, drop this down just a tad to a 9.0 to 1 ratio, with the cam profile just about 3 quicks up to a 43, the springs and lifters down to a 42, with some VVT at all cams, and to pretty much make this even more unique, we're going to be adding some VVL with the VVO profile here to a 63, which that'll kick in at 40, uh, yeah, 4500 RPM, and the actual engine RPM will be set to 6500 RPM. And for the turbo, we're going to be using a boost control system with the intercooler size set right here to a 193 horsepower with a variable geometry ball bearing setup with the compressor size set for the first option to a 46 millimeters, 46.0. The turbine size set for the second option at a 42.9 millimeters right here. The air and compressor trim, the third option just a few sections down, a few clicks down to a 29. And lastly, for the maximum boost, it's not the best, but it'll do at an 8.70 PSI. And for the fuel system in the engine, to pretty much go along with Volkswagen, we're going to be using a direct injection thr a single th throttle setup with a standard mid-intake running on... Well, it's not the old update. It's a manifold size set to a 54, running on premium fuel. Fuel mapping, couple clicks up, and plus one on the quality because, well, we don't want those diesel emission scandals to hit us again. And finally, for the exhaust, all this good stuff, so we're using some cast mid-headers with the, uh, the header size set to a 47, with the exhaust size right here set to a 57.1 millimeters or 2.25 inches, which that translates to. And we're using a regular 3-way cutter converter, a straight-through first buffer, and reverse flow to get the final power rating of 154.8 horsepower at 5,900 RPM and the torque at 156.7 pounds feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. And yes, I was building this engine in private off-camera for about a good couple hours to get a good, healthy power band going, especially when the turbocharger kicks in around 2,200 RPM, kind of levels out, and then drops off at around like in the mid-4,000s till it gets around red line right here. So yeah, pretty decent of fuel efficiency, power, and all that good stuff. So quickly, give you here this engine right now. Not as powerful as the inline 4 engines, even though we are restricted to the size up in here, as we'd see this big ass arrow and the rear drive and all wheel drive length constraints that we got here. So, unfortunately, couldn't put a four cylinder, so we gotta live 155 horsepower inline 3. Okay, for the drive type, even though this is for automation in general, not for Beam and G, we're gonna be choosing the rear wheel drive setup with an advanced automatic 6 speed with the top speed set to 141 miles per hour. Which, it'll be a little bit less with the added arrow, which you'll see in a time lapse a little bit shortly throughout this video. Such as the front splitter, rear diffuser, and the rear wing. So, differentials, put a viscous LSD to be like the Nissan 370Z. 
Now for the tires, we're using some radio medium compound tires with the front tire whip set to a 185 millimeters and the rears, I think I set these to a 215, I believe. Uh, yes it is. We have some alloy rims in this bad boy and for the brakes, we're going to be using a solid disc two piston, excuse me, two piston with the size set to 300 millimeters. We're going to be doing this for the front and back the same size, but this will be a one piston solid disc brake of also 300 millimeters, Rhinomark Wowzers. And for the undertrain, all that good stuff. Well, pretending we do have an undertrain with this bad boy, just want to be Volkswagen Beetle. Put a semi quiet undertrain with the brake airflow size set or the slider at a 17. And for the interior, all this good stuff. Well, unfortunately, we're gonna be having an interior part of this design build in the time lapse. So we're gonna be using a luxury interior with a luxury CD player. And with the safety and all that good stuff, so for the steering, we're gonna be using some variable hydraulic power steering with traction control and ABS brakes and some standard 2000 safety standards. And lastly, for the suspension, we're gonna be using some progressive springs with gas mounted to dampers and uh, semi active sway bars. We'll start off with normal preset and I'll do some tuning right here, which I did a little bit right here. So all there is is just increase the rear camber to a 1.1 degrees in the rear, preferably negative camber. And it's up to springs, dampers by one click, drop it by 300 millimeters. And right there is pretty much what sums up about this car right here. About a full G of steering at slow speeds and all that good stuff. So currently our top speed, 141 miles per hour for the 0 to 60 in 8.1 seconds. Well, I pretty much got the 0 to 60 around this time with my test build at Beam and G to make sure this car actually works in that game. So yeah, since I made that test build with the same tuning and specs right here, I'll just show you a time lapse of me building this VW bug right here. So let's get ready to commence the time lapse right about now. So for the design of this car, I made a draft design off camera so I know what to do instead of struggling for a good amount of time. So with the front, I replicated the headlights, turn indicators, and the grill trim to the best of my ability. I also made the grill a bit larger than usual, added a pair of fog lights, and added a basic front splitter. After doing the front, I slapped on a typical sunroof on top of the car. Going towards the side, I added a pair of door handles and a pair of mirrors with turn indicators, including a Wolfsburg Edition badge which is seen in some late 2000s Volkswagens. With the back, there aren't a whole lot of fixtures I've added compared to my other builds. I added these taillights that have these silvery bolts or whatever that you can't get rid of. I also added the rear indicators that are similar to the ones up front with the front turn indicators and the daytime running lights, including a basic rear diffuser, the badging, exhaust tips, license plate, rear vents, and a rear spoiler for added downforce in the rear. So after getting everything done with this build, here's what it came out. This is the 2003 Volkswagen New Beetle Wolfsburg Edition. This limited edition of the Beetle is fuel efficient, kind of powerful, and loaded with many amenities. And it's rear engine just like the original Beetle's, but it's front wheel drive. Alright, so I finally got this here car all set and done, the near replica version of the Volkswagen New Beetle, but in this particular model, the frickin' Wolfsburg Edition with a rear engine that will be front wheel drive in BMG Drive. And also before I export this car, I did lower the suspension by a lot to 270 millimeters rather than the original 300 millimeters to give it more of a more sporty look. So yeah, so despite that new ride height change, and despite my one and only problem with this here car, such as the currents the front of the engine being very narrow, let's export the car to BMG Drive and show you how to make it front wheel drive. Alright, so here I am in Notepad++ with the Camzo Engine J beam opened up for the new Beetle right here. So to make this car front wheel drive while being rear engine, well first things first, we hit Control F to bring up the Find option. And I select Rear Diff. So go to here, keep going, keep going until you get right around here, right around here. To the Camzo half shafts rear with the rear half shaft section right here. So currently with the wheel axle right here, it is set to being rear wheel drive while driving the right left tire and the right rear tire. So if I change the wheel axle, both the rear left and rear right to being a front left, so change the R to an F for being front wheel drive for the front left wheel and front wheel drive for the front right rear also, or front right, geez. And the actual shaft too right here for the half shaft, same thing. Rear left to front left, and rear right to front right. 
And as you see, I control S to save the document right here, and then go to the zip file here, and click on yes to modify the up, uh, the archive and all that good stuff, and load in BMG Drive and show you the difference between the two. So here I am at the bottom map of Driver 2's Las Vegas map, which is a recently added map in the BMG forums, there's a link down below in the description. So as you can see right here with the drivetrain map, so what I've done in Notepad++ to make this effect change of being rear-wheel drive to front-wheel drive, if I go to here with the two tires that are like translucent right here at the bottom right and bottom left here, so the bottom left shows wheel axle, rear left, wheel axle, rear left, not driven. If it would have been rear wheel drive, then this would have been connected for the rear left wheel and the rear right wheel. And as I go here to the half shaft front right, it is actually being driven by the front right wheel right here, and including the front left half shaft driven by the front left wheel. And for proof, let me do a hard acceleration by redlining it and gunning it. Uh, trash control. Alright, here we go. Proof. See, wheel spin on the front wheels and not the back wheels? That's because, well, as you can see with the powertrain map and what I just said, it is changed from being rear wheel drive to front wheel drive just like that. So yeah, despite those changes, we're going to start off for a base performance test to see if this is a benefit for being front wheel drive while being a rear engine car. We'll start off with the 0 to 62 acceleration test, followed by the 62 to 0 brake test, and finally a top speed run with this vehicle. So let's get ready to start our 0 to 62 test, which I kind of aborted earlier. So start it now. Start for the second time as I accelerate. Bit of wheel spin. Third gear to. God damn it. Second to third gear as so. Let's keep going to straight and. 0 to 62 in 8.63 seconds of 443.19 feet. Not so bad, okay. So 62 to brake test. Okay, they're showing 62 right now as we upshift like crazy brake. And 62 to 0 in 2.34 seconds of 107.12 feet. Despite having some 300 millimeter brakes front and back, which is pretty much realistic for most cars, especially like this, a sports luxury model of this particular car, this Volkswagen Beetle, I'd say it's pretty great. It's above average, but not like world's best, but it's great. So for a top speed run already in effect, I did a poor launch right there with trash control enabled, so let's see, better? Yeah, better, 0 62 at 8.34 seconds of 428.14 feet, not too bad. So in all the base shit, the 0 to 62 was like all over the place, like if I add like 10 pounds to the car from like 2700 pounds, like 2730, 40, 50, something like that, it goes from like the 0 to 60 from like 7.7 .7 seconds and all of a sudden it jumps up by like 5 or 6 tenths of a second, like more, compared to what I got with the previous 0 to 62 test. I don't have to do with the turbocharger, something like that, being rear engine and being like 155-ish horsepower and all that good stuff, but I don't know if that's what it was. I thought the calculations were kind of like awkward how the game calculated the 0 to 62 in this particular car, so top speed run. Oh, we got a corner, so technically... We could say it's a pass, but we were off by a few miles an hour, so we hit that wall of the building just as so, and here we are at a stop, and there's the tire going mental up in here as it drives by itself. So wait, 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 the e-brake. It doesn't stop. Fade the brakes. Well, it does stop. Good. So, okay, after that, full construction vehicle before I jump this onto a time trial run, so we can see here, critical damage to the front left portion of the vehicle. So, yeah, add uh, camera. Please, camera. Well, there you go. So right now, let's take you on a time trial run of this car right now. So here we have at the chicane here of the Suzuka circuit, and we're doing only one lap around the entire Grand Prix racetrack with this here Volkswagen Beetle with the rear engine and front wheel drive, all that good stuff. So let's get ready to excel right here and ready, go. Damn automatic transmission, kind of, uh... Damn, that cornering screwed me up right there. All right, so the air temperature and the brakes, god damn, the brakes are at 48 degrees. <laughs> Those are pretty cold. Let's just wing it right here. Hopefully this will work out just as fine. And also a fun fact, this really came up to my mind right now. There was a rear engine front wheel drive car back in the day. I think like the 1930s, like a concept car called the Dymaxon. And it was supposed to be like a car with a Ford flathead V8 engine. And that concept car was designed, I believe fully designed or in the blueprint or something like that back in the late 1930s around World War II started. So overall with the car here, to make this left hander with the gas all the way down. There is some like lift off oversteer with this here car with the setup of the suspension and being rear engine and front wheel drive. And that's the problem with rear engine cars is they have a tendency to oversteer like crazy on the liftoff oversteer or just full on power oversteering. 
So we're making pretty good haste right here with the speed, all that good stuff. So here comes this sharp right hander. Let's see here. Lift off, brake. Ooh, damn. Now that is some lift off oversteer again. Damn. A lot of oversteer, but it's controllable. I like this. I didn't see the G's, but I think it showed like 1.1. Let me see here. Let's just make this harder. Yee, about a full G right there. Let's not get myself over it. Look at this. Drift, drifting. <laughs> Imagine drifting on a front wheel drive car like that. So I almost managed to make my first time on this channel, I believe, a front wheel drive drift with a rear engine Beetle instead of being front engine like the real life new Beetle and the A5 Volkswagen Beetle that they recently discontinued a little while ago. Like 2019 or something like that, they discontinued the A5 Beetle. All right, kids, he's making a left turn. What's his full set? Uh, never mind. I thought the full set, the slight oversteeringness would compensate, but never mind. Yokohama. Break. One more, a little bit more. Here we go. What's that be like last time? How I keep overshooting the corner or undershooting it to the point where I go to pit road or something like that. So despite some liftoff oversteering and general oversteering, we do get our lap time in the two minute mark of a two minutes, 55 seconds, 60 milliseconds, just under three minutes. That's, that's not too bad. I'll give you that for being under a single lap of a rolling start. All right, got my UI back. Let's get ready to slam into something at a very high speed and around a hundred sub miles and I just drift. I wiped out. I just Sebastian vettel myself, but at a hardcore scale. So with the crash there, yep, there goes the front of the car. And that is it with this here vehicle. So let's just call it that. So for the final part of the video, let's get ready to drop ourselves down to Car Jump Arena to see if we can force car bakers to start making rear engine front wheel drive cars instead of being front engine front wheel drive and all that good stuff like most cars are nowadays. So take it to the top of the ramp right now. All right, so here we are at the top of the ramp as so. So we got a four light and a five light. So get ready to accelerate with the Beetle right now. So accelerating. Uh, uh, traction control, please stop doing what you do best. Zero to 62 at 7.27 seconds of freaking light ass bowling and 239.59 feet. In our top speed and 147 on our launch. We might do a backflip, land on our roof at the 300 marker, 300 meters. And over run as we go. And we're on our roof again. Is the sand going to make things worse and just start to boil? And land the pool. Get out of the pool. Tire busted up in here. Rear right tire deflated as it goes. Psss, as so. And roll over again on our freaking roof for the third time from that launch. So let's get ready to flip this bad boy over and land it on our roof for the fourth time. Please land other than the roof. God, jeez. All right, please. You're welcome. So here we go with the car as so on our four wheels as the radiator is leaking in the back. Oh my god, the engine is completely exposed, bruh. We got the goddamn engine exposed. And I'm, I'm just surprised how <laughs> how the main engine isn't broken. It didn't say the little air up in here. Say that the engine is broken, but we do have the engine completely exposed and some polygons or... That's me. So yeah, the engine is still okay despite being poking out all that good stuff. So does it drive? We're accelerating. Oh, no. American Horror Story beats German Engineering. So for the final part of the video, as I'm accelerating at a very high speed, hopefully, at uh, almost same 0 to 62 compared to ramp way back there. So we're gonna crash ourselves at the final bridge pillar to get a high speed crash just going. So let's ramp up the curb, unlike the freaking Spolware up in here to DMEX. Now we get up there as so. 145 miles an hour, dead on into the barrier. The freaking bridge pillar, I meant. So 50 times solo, how will this go? All right, 50 times solo to a hundred times. So here's a hundred times solo. Here is the car creaking dinkily and shifting up the chassis of the body. What is that? The front splitter, I believe, or the rear? Yeah, it's the front splitter going mental up in here. Go up a little bit. I think this is 60 times slow mo with the new 0.26 update and back it up and full time. Engine's running. Are you kidding me? And there's the tires. So a final look at the car as so, so hastefully do that. And boy, look at the freaking front end. Oh my god. So the front end has been decimated big time. The sides, not so much as what you really think of unless you're looking like from the corner panel or something like that. The rear end, well, some loose J-beams, a lot of stuff. The body crinkle does include a spoiler too. Left side, kind of like the right side. And what the hell is that noise? This, uh... Is the tire trying to leave the chat or what? Let's just ignore that and get the hell out of here. 
So that'll do it with automation and BMG Drive with the Volkswagen New Beetle Wolfsburg Edition. So for a rear-engine car that's powered by the front wheels being front-wheel drive, I'd say it performs not too bad in terms of like general performance, but with the handling, as you may have expect for a rear-engine car like this, is that it has some considerable amount of oversteering, whether it's for the liftoff oversteering, which is the main culprit with this car, with a side of general oversteering if you just like for and all that good stuff with the high-speed steering, foring it and all that good stuff, so mainly it's the liftoff oversteer is the big problem with this car. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also, check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.